Calling him for the Athletic's longest serving player, just over eight years now at Station Park. Just looking back over your career, can you remember who, who signed you for four for Athletic and when did you make your debut? It was uh, Jim Moffat that signed me. I can't even remember the exact date of my debut, but it was right away. It was the first league game I played in anyway. Um, the start of the season. I remember how we got beat. So <laughs> <laughs> it was the next one I remember, but I was strung right away. It was a, an interesting season, your first season at Station Park. Well, what do you remember of the season in general? I um, finished bottom of the league, <laughs> not in the third division, which wasn't great. Um, I think really so, we finished bottom, to be honest. There were a couple of good boys in the dressing room, but standards of football was it, it wasn't great. So, our first question is from Chris Coates, who's the club photographer. And he's talking about your first season. He says your first season ended with the loons at the bottom of Scottish football, as you've said. What did you think the future would hold for you? And did you imagine that you would still be here in your ninth season at Station Park? Well, once the, the gaffer obviously got the job that summer after we just finished bottom league, so I knew him from previously. He took me on Monday breaking when I was at St Johnson. Um, so I certainly knew the standards would, would rise quite a bit when the gaffer had got hold of the place. So. Whether I thought I'd be here after nine years, after I'd been here two or three then I definitely did because it's, it's the best part time club in Scotland, it's, it's quite local where I'm from and if you're going to be part time you might as well be the, the best one, so yeah. yeah. You kind of covered my next question which was why have you stayed so long at Forfa, so have you anything? You just get else? treated, you get treated properly, you know, if he looks after you, um, it's a good club to be about, you know, we have the mingles, there's no any barriers between board and playing staff and people that work behind the scenes, everybody knows everybody, so that's what makes it so comfortable for players, I think. What's your happiest memory as a player? Um, probably the playoff win, going through the third row, third division up to the second, mm -hmm. our growth over mm -hmm. two legs, that was probably the, just, I think the whole atmosphere of the day, the second leg at home, it was uh, a decent crowd and obviously the fact we won two now, was, that was probably the best memory as a player. The uh, next question is from a supporter, Dean Quick Kettles, who responded within a minute of this coming on to online, so he was keen to get your answer to this question. What are your three top goals in a four for shot? Um, I did double check to make sure you had scored three. I've definitely scored three, I think. Just, just. Um, the one in the playoff final against our growth, um, it's kind of like a volley of threads and drops that set us on our way. That was, Obviously, for its importance, and it was a decent goal as well. Um, it scored a free kick against Air at Force or Station Park in midweek game. I remember we were 2 1 down and we ended up winning 3 2. And it scored a free kick after I came off the bench and it was one assisted that mm -hmm. made it all a little better. Um, and probably the one against Dunfermline at the tail end of last season, the free kick when the goal was expecting the cross. And, I've tried that a few times before and it's yeah. got left right centre but it came off that day and obviously the importance of it as well as centre on the day was another one. Thanks for that. So, which is the best match you've been involved in in your, in your whole career? You could, have, you could add your other clubs if you want to. What's the best match you've been involved in? Performance wise or result wise? Personal well, give, give us both. Give us both. Um, result wise, just from a bit of Rangers at the League Cup at Station Park, obviously. And, um, for a couple of fourth, I know Rangers were going through obviously big transition and what have you, but you still look at the players I had, there were international players playing for us to, to put them in the League Cup, that certainly meant a lot to the club and I uh, quite enjoyed that. Uh, personal struggle. Okay, I've not had many good performances. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, do you have any amb ambition to manage? Possibly an interesting question today, but do you have any ambitions um, anyway? It's not something I've thought about yet, if I'm being honest. Um, I'm still obviously looking to play for a good few years yet. Um, even coaching-wise, I've put it this way, I couldn't imagine my life without football. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll probably stay in it in some way, but management, I'm, I'm not so sure. Okay, thanks. So this next question is from a, a young lad, he's a friend of mine, uh, Theo, Theo Kiriaki. He asks, what are your targets for this season? Um, certainly, uh, I think after the season we've last seen, I don't know if we'll top that, but I'm certainly going to look at the playoffs again. Mm -hmm. um, definitely. And the way we've started, we've shown we're more than capable of picking up results, you know. Um, but we'll see how that goes. We'll tell the playoffs at least, yeah. Do you have any personal targets yourself? Do you do that at the start of the season? Just uh, try and get as many games as you can under your belt, as many starts as you can. And obviously, when you do play, 
Connor as much as you can in the team. Um, so, next question is from a, a Welsh supporter, Simon Harvey, who said to me that he began to support Forfar in 1984 when he saw and then for the grandstand and four for just won the second division. And so you've begun that said that's my club. He's asking, who is the biggest joker in the dressing room? There's a few. It's a good dressing room to be fair. Um, Mark Baxter keeps everything on his toes, he makes that he's not so much a joker, he's just a funny, funny guy. Um, like I say, there's a few, it's a great dressing room that way. We've got the likes of Jan, who's a funny boy. Um, not so much big bad, he's a sleeping tablet, he's just the <laughs> granddad of the dressing room, but he tries. Um, and we've got a, a good bunch of boys in there. I'm the quiet one. Right. I, I, I can kind of guess <laughs> that you seem quite quiet. Do you get much stick from the, the, the lads, uh, the jokers in the park then? Do you get much stick from them? Uh, no, really no, because I can stick up for myself. <laughs> the quiet one was a joke. <laughs> no, no, no really. No, it's, yeah. we tend to the other victims that we go for every week, so yeah. no, we've not been done yet. And, and just finally, just to end this, who inspired you the most to get into football? Uh, much the same as many people, probably my dad, you know, taking the left, right and centre across the country, um, following you wherever you went to watch games, and I feel they were my bad players these days, so, so it would be my dad, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And was there any players that you, you looked at when you were young and thought I'd like to be like him? Um, just your, your standard ones. When I was really young, my hero was Marco Van Basten, but yeah. I, I was a striker when I was younger, but then my legs went, so right. it's, uh, but then the more you, you come into the game, you look at it, watch the midfielders and boys like the Barry Ferguson, so, uh, on a higher scale, Zidane, things like that, you've got to look to the boys and try and pick up a few bits off them. Right. Well, Mark, we really appreciate your time, thanks for being the guinea pig technically in this trial, and hopefully when we get some other players, yeah, do this as well. Well, thanks right. for your time, Mark. No bother, Daniel, thank you.